What's up, everybody? It's me, Richard, for Books Mata 2. And today I will be reviewing Lord Jim. So this is a great book, and let's get into it, okay? All right. Okay, Lord Jin by Joseph Conrad. I have never, ever heard of Lord Jim, this book. I have never heard of this book until I saw it on my 100 Greatest Reads poster thing. So I didn't know what to, to think of it, but I started reading it, uh, or well, listening to it um, with an open mind. And I was pleasantly surprised because Conrad apparently has a very, very good uh, eloquent way of writing um, is very descriptive he was very descriptive in everything that he wrote about all the characters and everything but anyways let me give you the quick overview it's about a young sailor who's looking for adventure he wants to live life experience all the adventure and the honor and everything of just uh, I guess sailing because that's his main uh, income or, or whatever that's what he does he's a sailor so anyways he he gets hired onto a boat and then the boat ends up getting in some trouble and he makes a poor decision and he's brought to trial kind of. He befriends a, a, a person there at the at the, the court, Marlo, and uh, Marlo helps him, uh, helps him out by getting him a job someplace else, but that doesn't work out. So they end up uh, basically kind of hiding him uh, on an island basically. he They gave him a job as like a trade like a, um, I just want to say trade specialist, <laughs> uh, like, you know, like a trade. On this island, he becomes pretty famous and like, like a lord and everything. That's why it's called Lord Jim. The islanders call him a two-on Jim. Anyways, Lord Jim, he falls in love with this local woman named Jewel. He basically wants to, he's going to stay there his whole life. He's made his decision. Um, so anyway, some events happen there and the ending is really great. Uh, it's it's probably something that you guys want might want to read. Okay, a little bit of little bit of background about Jim. He's very he's very ethical. He he stands up for what he believes in. He's very honorable, and um, he does not back down from from anybody and for any man. He stands his ground when confronted. So he's got a very strong passion. And even in the book, the one of the one of the characters that's helping him out. He uh, basically calls him, he, he's a very romantic person, very passionate about life and about adventure. And he wants to just, he wants to live his life to the fullest almost. So what happens is on this boat, when in the beginning of the book, it hits something and it's going down. And uh, the only people who knows that it's going down because it's in the middle of the night is him and like three other crew members. One is the captain and the, the captain is a, is a real piece of work. He's a, he's a jerk, basically. He didn't care about anybody except himself. So anyways, they 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 get into this lifeboat, and, but the guilt is just racking him. And um, because he knows that all these, I think it's like 900 or 800 people are on that boat. And the reason why they just wanted to ditch the boat is because there was only like, there wasn't enough lifeboats for all those those people. The boat ends up getting rescued before anybody even dies. Or drowns or anything and they get get rescued but uh they so they get back to land and they find out that everybody's been is saved um but then uh they're also accused of you know just ditching the the boat and that's a big no-no back then you're not supposed to do that the crew is not supposed to do that and so they go on trial but before the trial everybody just runs except for jim because he's got he's very he's very uh very true very moral we're very highly ethical. <laughs> he, he's taking the, the, the arrows for everybody. And um, Marlo basically helps him find a job to, you know, to try to just stay low and everything like that. But ends up that does not, doesn't work because one of the old crew members is the same job. So he can't, he can't stay there. So they put him on, Marlo finds an old friend who has connections uh, to this, little outpost, trading outpost on an island in India. But it's very, very violent island. There's like 
three warring little factions there. And, they, and that trading post uh, leader, he has a son and the, about the about the, almost the same age as, as Jim. Anyways, they um, become really great friends and they uh, basically collaborate and, and uh, form basically kind of like a, like almost like a little army or their own little government. And they start clashing with these other, these other two factions um, for the better of the people. And so all of their, all of Jim's uh, plans are all good. Now, I'm, this is a quick overview. There, there is a lot of detail in this, uh, this book. Uh, Conrad is, like I said, very eloquent. It, everything is descriptive. Um, all the characters are flushed out really well. You, um, you really connect with, with Jim and his, his moralistic uh, uh, ethical views on life. And it, actually it's more like view, personal views that he holds, him, holds himself so, so highly that it actually is a burden and a boon it's interesting because he's so prideful. It's is very, it's very unique. And then also, I think with with all of this pridefulness and this high ethical standard that he lives by, it made him, I think, personally think that he he was very untouchable, you know, because he had so much positivity because of his ethical standards. He developed some sort of positivity about it. He was always positive about everything, even when it was negative. The problem with that though, is that he put himself into some bad situations. And for some reason, whenever he would get into these bad situations, he would just chalk it up to life. It wouldn't bug him. And he was almost like an untouchable. Like he didn't even, he, he, he wouldn't care if, if he was, if life was in danger. And he didn't realize that so many people were helping him out because of his, I want to almost say like a Magoo kind of style. I think it's, it, this, this book made me think about how, how we are personally. You can be a hundred percent ethical and a hundred percent prideful and everything like that. And if you're like that, that's, it's okay. But you have to realize that there is another, there's, there's a little gray area that you might have to, to function in. And if you don't, you're going to end up dead. <laughs> because he was so prideful he he was very ignorant of the fact that everything that he was doing was getting in, into a little bit of trouble or you know things that it, it might it might end up you know harming him later i think that in the book he had a lot of outside help and he would say yes i'm lucky and blah 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 you know it was like i don't know when my luck's gonna run out or you know things like that i mean that's what you got from it like he he didn't you know he understood that he was lucky but still yeah he kept doing the he kept doing the things that he did and and a lot of the things that he did wasn't like crazy or anything or, or out there but i think he would went into it like with a lot more gusto than he should have maybe he should have been more conservative about some of some of his actions and some of his plans because Basically, his luck ran out. Ran out. Oops. <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you the ending, even though I kind of hinted it a little bit. Uh, but anyways, this is a pretty good book. I, I love the description of everything. His descriptive writing is, is phenomenal. It does slow down the book a little bit. So if you do decide to read this book, be prepared for that because it's a lot of, it's a lot of descriptive uh, uh, writing. Like, you know... Oh, the sunset was like golden syrup on the on the pancakes or whatever. <laughs> I'm just making some shit up, but no. But anyways, it, but it's very descriptive, and um, yeah, just uh, just be prepared for that. I mean, if you love it, I loved it. I, I loved it at the beginning. I was like, whoa, this is this is really descriptive. And then I kept going, and I just, oh, this is so awesome. It was great because he just described everything and you just felt like everything it was great and then um but then towards the end of the book i gotta admit i was kind of like rolling my eyes like okay come on hurry up what's going on you know it was just like it was just dragging on it was like overly descriptive um i guess maybe i just got tired of it or i don't know also it's uh this is set back in like this has like a 
Indiana Jones-esque, <laughs> I guess, kind of feel to it, even though it's even, it pre predates Indiana Jones timeline. <laughs> and, you know, I got a lot of, like, I don't know, just positive, positive things about about life in general, some like, some really good morals in, 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 in this book. It made me really think, and I, I liked it. So, yeah, I would, I'd go ahead and, uh, I'd read this book if I was you. I'd give it, uh, they're big on tea down there, right? So, let's, let's give it a, I'd say a solid, solid four, maybe four and a half teas. <laughs> Teacups. <laughs> yeah. Four and a half tea, teacups, solid four. Oh, the, the descriptive narrative is so, it's awesome. He, he did a good job. And this was actually just short stories. And uh, I think it was a magazine or a newspaper. I think it was a magazine. I think it was 1899 to 1900. So that's basically it. Pretty good for a, uh, for a book that I never even heard of, huh? That's pretty amazing. Anyways, so that's it. Anyways. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I go. I hope everybody has a great day. Um, I'm getting ready to go into work here. Got my coffee, and um, yeah, I will talk to you guys later. Remember to like and subscribe, and share if you want. Also, uh, hit that notification bell thingy, so <laughs> so that you know whenever I upload another one. Okay, another review. All right. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Adios.